Welcome to another edition of the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce from the bad streets, the mean streets of North Tonawanda, the avenues to the town of Tonawanda, to Pittsburgh, and now from Orlando in the happiest place on earth, known as the Paj. Welcome, Ron Pazic. How are you these days? Oh, Ed, I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good, good. In honor of you, um, you know, talking to you from Florida today, I already got my golf shirt on, well, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I got my sunglasses nearby. So I think we'll be good with this today. What do you think? You're, you look like the Hollywood star. That's uh, you look like one of Mickey's friends over here, you know? <laughs> so, Thank you, you, know, you. you got this golf shirt on. It's perfect weather over here. Well, well like, what, and the Northeast in Buffalo, right? And the Northeast, it's it's. I'm I'm located in the Finger Lakes, but right. in the Northeast here, where I mean, we're we're it's a high of thirty today. So I mean, it's uh, that's well, okay. You're in, a, you're in a beautiful part of the country. That's Skinny Atlas, Auburn. That's an absolutely gorgeous area. Thank you. I mean, we've enjoyed it. I mean, I do miss not being part of the North Tonawanda scene, but this football Hall of Fame project that we've done um, has given me a connection back. And speaking of which. Your connection is with the Bishop Gibbons and, and your high school career at Bishop Gibbons. But walk me, walk and talk about um, growing up in North Tonawanda for you and how you got involved with sports. Well, you know, uh, grew up, like you said, close to the avenues uh, in that Miller Street area. Um, in, in, in our era, in our generation, you know, uh, it, was, it was a time when you played sports. You went out, if you were... If you were doing something in the neighborhood, you know, uh, you got up at on a Saturday morning, you watched a little bit of your cartoons when you were younger and it's got out and shot out there to the ball, to the ball fields and played, uh, played the sports by season. If it was baseball, we played cork ball, softball, baseball. If it was hockey, we played hockey in the street. If it was uh, football, of course, we played touch football uh, down there and it's basketball, you know, it was basketball two on two, one on one, whatever. You know, so we played during the seasons. Uh, unfortunately, none of us played golf at that time and no, no, no soccer at that time. You know, so it was basically the four seasonal sports we played. And, and, and with the seasons, we played them, you know, and, and in the neighborhood I was um, when I was like in seventh grade, eighth grade. I had guys like uh, Tom Jasinski and, and uh, Jimmy Ondek lived in the neighborhood and Chisbar, uh, the older ones, Nick and that. So a lot of times when we played ball. You know, I was playing with those guys as well, you know, and so it, it helped me uh, from a, an athletic standpoint to play with some of those guys who are already sophomores and juniors in high school already. So that was growing up in the old uh, Wheatfield Miller Street Avenue area. Yeah. You, you graduated 1969. Correct. So 69. then you would have played football 1968 season, probably yep. 1967. Did you play as a sophomore on varsity back in 1966? No, I played a sophomore. I, I can't recall. I, I junior year, I played varsity uh, and, and senior year. Um, but I had the distinction playing behind uh, one of the greatest over there come out of Gibbons behind Hank Motoraki. Uh, Motor was a left guard. I was a left guard, you know, and uh, Motor caught in high school. I caught in high school. So I followed Motor quite a bit. I, I just wish I had his uh, total athletic prowess because he was, you know, first team All-American. I mean, first team All-Catholic and first team uh all Western New York. So it was some big shoes to follow, you know. How were your teams back then in 67 and 68? 67, well, 68, uh, 67, we had a good year. Like I said, it was my junior year uh, playing against uh, uh, and learning and, and, and earning my keep on the team. Uh, but it was more of a learning experience as a junior. Uh, um, when you did the Oklahoma drills, uh, you're going against Mudaraki, uh, you're going against Mark Lorian, you're going against some, some tough guys when, you know, that were seniors. And that helped me into my senior year, you know. Um, but if I look back at, you know, uh, I look back at the freshman year, you know, I think that was 65. Um, Hank Lewis was the head coach, you know. As you talked about growing up, um, we played sports in the neighborhood, but we really never played organized sports, you know? So our freshman year was really 
for us going into organized sports where we where we walked in and as a freshman you're getting equipment you know uh, the equipment we used maybe was a GC Murphy helmet uh, playing locally in the in the down the street down the street but here now we're getting a we're getting the the shoulder pads we're getting the knee pads we're getting the pants we're getting the helmet we're getting the girdle and I'm laughing because as a freshman you think of girdle you think well, what the hell the, the, the ladies wear the girdle you know but it was it was something that you wore to protect the hips and the back and all that and, and you had the complete uniform but that was our introduction to 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 organized sports you know in football you know you had it in baseball but, you know, you didn't have it uh, in football so much because, honestly, nobody could afford that equipment, all that stuff, you know, uh, to wear. So our freshman year was really a, a learning year for, for us from organized and, and understanding what it was to be on a football team with teamwork and what discipline was uh, learning. Because if you look at football, football is really the only sport where 11 guys have to be in unison. You can't start a play in any of those sports besides football and offense unless all 11 people are set and they move and can't move other than they're in motion. And, and it teaches it teaches you that discipline to, to know what a count is, to work as a team, as a teamwork. So that was, that freshman year was a learning process, you know, and, and uh, we had a great we had a great coach in, in uh, the, at the varsity level in Hank Wadaraki, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Hank Lewis, and, um, and Mr. Lewis did a great thing. Uh, when we were freshmen, our last year, we got to dress as freshmen, you know, and go out with the varsity and be part of that last game and just dress and be along the sideline. Now, think back. We take the bus from Gibbons to, to, to Payne Junior High, which was Payne Junior High at that time. We get to dress down in the locker room as a freshman, go up them steps, and go through that gate, just like I was, and, and, and be at that gate in, in Vetter Stadium, where, and running through there, I look back and think, when I was in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, I would be at that side of the fence and be yelling to all those empty greats like Johnny Chisera, can I have your chin strap? Can I have your chin strap at the last game? And here as a freshman, we're running through and going to be part of then going on better field, you know, to be part of that. That was that was a, a great experience. Although nowadays they can't ask for the uh, guy ding uh, uh, chin strap unless you got Lysol, you know. So it's a, it's it's a different world now. But those were, that freshman year was it was the introduction to to organized football into what it meant to be to be an organized sports. And wow. then and then moving up, of course, you know, got into varsity uh, and and. Um, that was a whole new experience. If you want to talk about that, <laughs> well, you, you since you brought it up, you keep got, you've got a big smile on your face when you talk thinking about back to your your varsity days. So if you, if you don't mind sharing, what what do you remember the most about it, or what fond memories, or what type of, of stories would you like to share or oh, yeah. can share? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we we uh, our varsity year was. Uh, was interesting in the fact that we got to scrimmage NT. I think Jerry White had uh, uh, talked a little bit about that, but it was really it was really something to to uh, to scrimmage the NT team, you know, and and to see actually George Vetter. I think that was might have been in one of his last few years he was coaching uh, to come there. Uh, to, they came to Gibbons and to to run an organized scrimmage against them, where you know uh, Ramsey would be on his side, Vetter would be on his side. And each play was, was you, go through the remote, you go through the motions of the play, but they would stop and say, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. He would stop and say, you did this wrong, this wrong. You know, uh, you got to correct this. Uh, Coach Winters who was on the offensive line, said you got to take this block this way, whatever. You know, uh, and that was, that was an, organized, an organized scrimmage, but it was a learning process as well. Uh, I remember going up against uh, uh, Dennis Mazur. Mazur was the uh, nose guard, and, and Dennis grew up in the neighborhood, you know, by me. He was Wheatfield. He had the bar there, and 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 everybody knew Dennis was a was a big man. He was a big man. So I said, "There's no way I'm going to take Dennis on one on one, hitting him high." And, and and there, every play I would cut him under at his feet, you know, and he'd jam me in the head and throw me in the ground and, and you know, laugh and go, Hey, Pays, how you doing? I say, Hey, Dennis, how you doing? And, you know, uh, we we're both two different schools, but we were still played in the same neighborhood, you know, and, and, and knew each other. So uh, that was a, an experience there. Uh, 
one of the stories that we had uh, uh, in a varsity game is, is kind of a funny one. Uh, we're, we're, we're playing Notre Dame, and I think Jerry and I talk about this quite a bit. We're playing Notre Dame and, at Notre Dame, and it was the second quarter, I think the early the second quarter, and we were driving down, and we're probably about on the eight-yard line going in. And Jerry White had calls the play, which was going to the right side, and I was on the left side. Comes up to the line, and he sees the, the, the defensive line by Notre Dame is stacked on the right. Right. So he can call an audible. So at that day, the, the color blue was the audible. If, it, if that color came out blue, we know we were changing the play. So uh, Jerry gets up there and, and, and sees the line is stacked to the right, says, I don't think this play's going to go there. So I'm going to shift this to the left and call a uh, 35 power, which is coming right up my butt. I think that if I recall the right numbers. And so he comes to the line and he gives, and he gives us a down and sat and he goes blue. And now, now to preface this, when Bill Stocky, God bless him, when he was our center and Val Victorian, very smart man, would come to the line, Bill would call out the, uh, the assignments. For example, he'd say, I got 78, I got 75, I got 74, and we, we, Bill would start it off. So I knew I had 75, he had 78 right down the line. So Jerry comes to the line, gets into there, gives us the down set, he goes, blue, 35. As soon as he says that one, the entire Notre Dame line shifts. I mean, they shift way down, right? And as soon as they did that, I just yelled out because my guy was gone. He was gone. I, 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 I go, oh, but I said, oh, not 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 oh sugar. But I said, oh, thing, you know, and and white had almost started laughing, you know, because he was blown through. And the guy shifts down and boom, he calls the play and on, on, on two repeats it and calls it on two. Boom, we run the play. I don't know. I think we might have scored on it or whatever, but I think Jerry told me that he, he had to bite his uh, his mouth guard because he was laughing so hard. And he said he, he saw the uh, back judge laughing. I go, what the hell? Because, you know, it was a complete shift. And then he just went back to what winners told you, protect to the inside and get to the guy to the first to the inside, you know. But that was a funny one from that back then and against Notre Dame. You, you didn't have large um, rosters when you played at Gibbons. I mean, you may have had – if 30 – players were on the varsity team that was a lot for you guys oh, yeah. wasn't it i mean um it was is it easy is it easy to assume that you guys were were close to one another because you didn't have as many teammates oh yeah you became a I closer mean, group to, to one another absolutely i mean because you know the guys that were playing that were playing baseball were the guys that were playing football. The guys that were playing basketball were the guys most likely at least playing some of the football, you know? So you, you and and like you said, uh, it was almost the same guys, you know? Uh, so you got to play with them all year round. You know, if I was, uh, Jerry White was the quarterback, he, I was catching him in, 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 in baseball, you know? So, uh, you know, Chismar was our tight end. And, and of course he, uh, uh, Jimmy was uh, playing outfield for us, you know. So a lot of the same athletes were repetitive in all in, in the other sports. So we got to know them. And you're right, um, uh, we didn't have the luxury. Well, it wasn't. Uh, we still had a pretty good amount of guys coming out. You know, uh, 20, 20, I mean, thirty guys. You, you look, you look uh, at NT, and they'd have 40, 50, You know, and and uh, they could pick, and you'd have to make the team. You know, and and uh, pretty much ours, everybody made it. Uh, but some of them backed out because of the hard drills and everything. Some of those would quit and, you know, didn't, didn't want to, it wasn't, that sport wasn't for them, you know, because football, you know, uh, it, it is a very demanding sport. It's very physical, very violent. You know, it's when you look back, you know, uh, you're really, you're pre pretty play, playing, a, playing a pretty tough and violent sport, you know, compared to what baseball is compared to what basketball is, you know, and, and uh, you're hitting guys, one guy wants to go one way, one guy wants the other way, and you're hitting and somebody's got to give, you know? So, and to see it on the professional level, you know, uh, if you've ever gone to a game and sat low, I'm sure you have, and you can see the speed of those guys, you really appreciate uh, what they go through and how, how violent that is, like, like a hockey game, whatever, you know? Let me ask you, um, you ever think about how Bishop Gibbons would have stacked up against some of the other Niagara Frontier League teams if you were – if you weren't in the Catholic League and you were over in the Niagara Frontier League playing against LaSalle and Trot, Niagara yeah. Falls and Tonawanda, 
the Ken Moores. How would you have guys have done? I think we would have held our own. I mean, uh, I think we would have held our own. I mean, uh, um, I, um, as I look, you know, we played Star Point in a, in a game, you know, uh, as a non-conference game. Uh, so, you know, we played them well, I thought, you know, and, and like I said, we scrimmaged NT. Uh, so I think we would have done well. You know, um, again, we had, um, we had a good bunch of athletes that grew up in the neighborhood, played sports as a young kid and, and were able to play it on a varsity level. And some played it on a collegiate level, you know, and, and some played it on from Gibbons played it on a professional level, you know, so you know, we were fortunate to, and we had good coaches, you know, and, and as NT did, uh, we did, you know, and uh, uh, Chuck Ramsey probably was one of the, was a great phenomenal coach. When I went to go uh, coach my first year at Wisconsin, when I graduated from Wisconsin, I had a year, I was coaching JV over there. I went back to Ramsey and, and, and sat down with him for about a couple hours to learn more about how to run the offense, how to run the defense, you know, and what he was using, you know, and then a couple of years later, when I came back, I, I worked with Franny Burke for, for about five or six years, coach at Resol. you know, so it was a lot of fun. If you met somebody off the street and had a conversation with them and you got talking about high school football, what would you tell that person about your experiences at Bishop Gibbons? I would tell them that it, it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience. It was a great experience of, on teamwork. And like I said, on discipline, um, it'll help you in the workplace. Uh, it builds great friendships. Um, you know, if I, if I run into, happen to run into someone back home, you know, uh, and we play football, you know, be it, be it uh, uh, Zoromi or, or John Srebinski at, at, at our reunion and, and, and Jerry, of course, and, and uh, Pat Cox, who's, who at that time was a junior, you know, uh, you see these guys and you, you got that bond, that, that, that bond that you played that, that very difficult sport, you know, uh, not that all the other sports are not easy, but football had a, had a different type of meaning because of the, 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 the hitting and everything that was involved in it. Um, but yeah, you, you, I would tell them to say, you know, if you, if you, if I met someone from now, uh, I would hope that they would learn. I would tell them that Gibbons experience was a great, was a great experience as was NT and 80 football back then. Do you have any regrets about your high school football career? No, no, no regrets. Uh, the only regret I had was uh, early in my junior year playing with guys in the neighborhood in, in June, I broke my clavicle. So I, I couldn't, uh, I didn't get back to practicing until like late August, you know, uh, with the, with the Gibbons team in junior. Uh, but that was the only, the only thing, you know, uh, that held me back a little, uh, playing, playing sandlot ball, you know, and, and versus, uh, organized. We've talked about a few things in this interview so far. What have I missed or what is, what would you like to add as one final thought regarding Bishop Gibbons football, your football career, and, and life in general in North Tonawanda. Well, life in general in North Tonawanda was great. I mean, it was a small town growing up. Friendships were great. Uh, all the way through grade school, through high school, uh, friendships that will never be broken. I could see the guys, if I will go back to Third Warders Club, I could see the guys I went to OLC with. Uh, our grade school and the memories and stories are like we just were coming out of eighth grade, you know, the, the same with high school, you know, you, you see those guys and, and, it, and it brings a, a warmth and a great feeling to see those guys because you, you grew up with them, you know, and, and uh, you shared the sports memories, you sure shared the school memories, the educational memories all of that, you know, and all of that bonding. So NT was, was, was great because it was a, a, a small hometown and it's our hometown, you know, and, and nobody could ever take that away. So that's, that's what I really enjoyed the most. Ronnie Pazic, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, keep warm in Florida, keep smiling, and we'll, we'll catch up with you back in North Tonawanda. God bless you. Thanks for, for uh, being part of this. Hey, thank you, Ed. It's always great to see you. And, and uh, thank you very much for having given me the opportunity. You take care, buddy. You too, pal. Thank you so much. Okay.